Okay, hey everybody, uh, we'll get started here in just a second. Can somebody just let me know you can hear me right now as I talk, maybe chat in the chat box, say hello, and uh, we'll get going. Awesome, thanks Lisa, thanks Matt. Perfect, okay. And uh, yes, this will be recorded. I'll mention that in a minute before you guys all start asking. And uh, well, we're coming right up on three o'clock, so let's not let's not chit chat and let's get going. So, welcome to today's webinar, a uh, step by step how to run buyer lead generating seller client satisfying Facebook lead ads for your listings. Uh, today, as we record this, it's February 5th, 2019. In case you're watching the replay, uh, if you're watching live, the recording will be posted to the Facebook group and sent in the dashboard of your uh, KB Core Conversion Plus system tomorrow morning. So um, that's that. You will get the replay in case you have to jump off. All right, so um, I'm gonna jump right into the content. Just know you can ask a question anytime using the chat box. We'll try to get to all of them. We have a great turnout today um, on short notice. So thank you all for being here. So let's jump right in and talk about what we're talking about. And that is what is a Facebook property lead ad? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up an example right here, but you know what? It may be helpful if I pasted you guys the link to this doc. I think that might be helpful. So let's get that out of the way. I know you're all, I know somebody's gonna ask for it. So might as well send it to everybody right now, send to all. There you go. And then in the window here, I'll sh just show you on the screen an example of the kind of ad I'm talking about. Now this is a carousel example. Um, you don't always have to do it this way. But when I talk about lead ad, uh, that's Facebook's objective uh, they call it lead ad or a lead generation ad. And what it does is if I click learn more, hopefully it works, it does. Um, and uh, you guys are gonna get uh, all my, do not call myself please. But anyway, uh, you're, you're gonna get a pop-up that fills, that pops up on the screen right here. And it's gonna pre-fill the phone number which is really cool that Facebook has on file. The email address they have on file and the name and some other, variables and what's great about this is after the ad is submitted they'll be redirected to the property they were looking at and you can have this information flow directly into um your conversion plus or kv core account so that's the beauty of it you get real contact info that facebook has on file now i want to kind of bring up a caveat i have some bullets here um i wouldn't want to call this i really want to be really clear this is not a hot, hot lead. Just kind of want to get that out of the way. Um, and to me, this is about a few things. It's about promoting your listings, uh, making sure they get lots of exposure. You know, if you're not running a Facebook ad, I almost think you're negligent these days. You know, it's like the biggest, fastest way to get exposure in a local area for your property. So you're promoting your listings, you're making your seller happy, and you can fill your database fast with people who might buy or sell someday with this approach. But I wouldn't just get, I wouldn't be in the mindset that these are people who want to buy a house tomorrow. An important distinction to get out of the way, but uh, at the at the cost per lead that you can do this at, it's a really great way to build your database and get it filled uh, fast. So um, why do this? So let's just bring up these points again. Lots of impressions to your listing fast. I mean, you could show to thousands of people within a mile or two of your listing daily, almost right away. Um, and affordable cost per lead into your database. So the expense here generally um, you, you can do really well. You know, I, I don't want to quote numbers, it can be different in every market, but under $5, under $3, I mean, some people I've seen really low numbers they've achieved with this approach. So name, email, cell phone for under $5 with the average transaction side in real estate, that can be really exciting, even if you're only converting, you know, a fraction of a percent of those leads in any, any given year. Real contact info, I've mentioned that. Um, uh, your seller will be happy. You know, we all have fiduciary responsibility. We got to market the darn thing. Um, so you'll be able, your seller will be happy. Um, you'll be able to sell more listings faster. Uh, you'll be able to close more listing appointments. You're able to close more listing appointments. I didn't have that in there because you know you can go into the listing appointment and say, hey, I'm going to run uh, X dollars or you know X number of days of a Facebook ad uh, directly to, to all the neighbors so they know it's for sale. Uh, you'll be able to sell more listings faster via the raw exposure 
And this is a key point. Um, you know, I think a lot of the listing agents on the call know this. You know, one of the one of the things you need to do sometimes is you might get aggressive with pricing and tell the tell the seller that you're going to test the market maybe 30 days or so, uh, and then you go back to them at 30 days, and, and you need some way to justify a price reduction. You know, depending on how motivated they are. And here you'll have some data. You'll be able to say, hey, we had a bunch of people seeing this on Facebook and you know all the other stuff you're naturally doing. And it just gives you another way to be able to justify a price, price reduction. And what comes from that, of course, is that you get more of your listings successfully sold if you can get the price in line with the market. So uh, that's kind of the, the why behind it all. Now, let's jump into the how. Uh, and before I jump into the how, this is gonna be demo based. It's a bit technical um, and slightly advanced, but we get a lot of questions about this process. I've done a, this webinar a few times over the years, you know, this similar content, and we get a lot of questions about this. And because we get a lot of questions about this and because the process that I'm going to outline here that you can do yourself works so well, we actually built out and revamped an older product called Property Boost uh, to follow the process I'm showing you today. So that is called uh, core property boost. Some of you guys might have gotten a message the past few days. We just we're just kind of rolling it out for KV Core users. If you're conversion plus, it'll be ready in a couple of weeks, uh, and you'll be able to order it directly. But basically, what that product is is the shortcut, one-click way to do what I'm about to show you. So just uh, I think it's good if you watch this webinar, you learn some new skills, you know, you see some new perspectives, you understand how this flow works, and then if you decide that you don't feel like you know you'd rather be belly belly with buyers and sellers, and you don't have all day to be doing this stuff. Uh, then you can, you know, you can uh, just click the easy button with uh, with Power Investor. Yeah, Terry, sorry, I did just jump right in. Sorry, three o'clock, man, punctual. I, I'm not on realtor time anymore. <laughs> just kidding, guys. All right. Uh, so um, another note here is that in order to do the process, I'm going to show you and inject the leads into Zapier uh, automatically uh, into Conversion Plus or KV Core automatically. You're going to need Zapier, and I think that plan is currently twenty dollars a month just to get that out of the way. Um, so you won't, you don't want to have to have that Zapier account if you use core property boost. That's another reason we built it is kind of shortcuts all of this and reduces some expense and hassle. All right. So step one, let's create the ad. I'm going to get into the nitty gritty. Now I'm going to jump into an ads dashboard and just walk you through the step by step. Uh, if I move too fast, sorry, uh, Lisa, you said the audio's in and out. I, I sh I'm on a good internet connection, but go to webinar has its own issues. If you're doing stuff on your computer at the same time, sometimes that can mess with the audio too, but I'll, I'll do my best to make sure that the connection is good. It looks okay right now. All right, let's jump into the ad dashboard. Oop, I had it linked here. I need a quick link. Let's choose this one. Okay, I'm gonna assume a lot of you guys have seen the Facebook ads dashboard. Uh, if you haven't, you can go to Facebook, just Google Facebook ads. You can go to business.facebook.com and set yourself up an account and get access to a dashboard like this fairly easily. It's free through Facebook. They wanna sell you ads, so uh, they make it fairly easy to get an account. So I'm gonna go into the ad creation section of my dashboard. And the objective here, again, is called the lead generation objective. So right here. And I'm gonna name my campaign, demo for webinar. Okay, so you would call your campaign whatever you want. You know, a good idea might be to call it uh, the name of your listing, or if you're doing a bunch of listings in one area, you can group them all in a campaign. Um, Annalisa, I'm getting, I'm seeing a comment. Everybody can see my screen, right? Somebody's saying they can't? Yes. Um, I'm wondering, Joe, Joe, maybe he has other windows possibly open that maybe may have okay. landed on top of it. So if you look to the left hand side of your well, either left hand side or bottom, wherever your tray is for your icons, you click on that little blue flower and you'll okay, everybody, a little bit <laughs> Thanks, I was, everybody can see us. Sorry, everybody. We just we just want to make sure everybody can see. So uh, we're good. Thanks, Annalisa. So let's go and continue here. We've got the campaign name. I was worried, you know, I've done it before while well, I'll talk for 10 minutes straight and I never clicked the screen button. So, <laughs> so here we go. So I created a campaign name. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna choose the Facebook page that we wanna promote. Um, it's loading a little slow, probably because we're on the webinar. Right here, I'll let that, I'll let that load. Here we go, select page. I'll pick 
my kind of demo page that I use for stuff, my Proportunity Knox page. There it is. I don't know if you guys can hear the Fortnite excitement in the background. If you can, sorry about that. Um, now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to choose the location uh, that we want to target. So um, you have a number of options here. One of my kind of rule of thumbs to use when doing single property ads is I'll just start by targeting people who are near the listing. Um, you can also go broader if you want. But in this case, the list, the test listing I'm going to be using is for a listing in Gulfport, Florida. I'll do current city only. Gulfport is only about a mile by a mile, so I'll choose that. Um, you can actually, and I haven't done it in a while, you can actually drop a pin on the map if you want to. Um, uh, Don, Zapier is required for this, what I'm showing you today, if you want to automatically send the leads into KB Core or Conversion Plus. If you want to download them manually and then uh, upload them or manually enter them, you don't need Zapier. Um, the Property Boost product Part of the reason for that is it simplifies everything. You don't need Zapier. You just push a button and, and everything happens on our end. Okay, so um, Gulfport, Florida, the age range I'm going to target. Um, this is a million dollar listing. I'm going to do kind of just use common sense based on the nature of this property. So I'm going to go 40 to 60 for age range. I'll do men and women. Um, totally up to you if you want to target. Uh, demographics lately more and more i've been actually not sweating the demographic targeting as much and just going especially for real estate geographic it, it seems that the algorithm learns pretty quick if you're running a campaign for a few days you don't need much but some of the things you might do to get people of uh, home buying age you might do married you might do college graduates things like that but for now i'm going to keep it simple and actually just leave that blank and just show the listing to everybody in this age, age range hey earl <laughs> earl's in largo um he's down the street for me okay sorry guys um so detail targeting we're gonna leave that blank daily budget 20 i need to address this sorry always happens annalisa three o'clock tuesdays um so pick a daily budget. I think five will work a lot of times for a single listing. That's going to be totally up to you. Um, if you, you're on these lead ad objectives, you're going to want to kind of keep the um, keep the price, the daily budget, at least one or two times what you expect to pay for a lead. So if I set it to five dollars, uh, then I'll probably get a lead or two a day with this kind of lead. I kind of know that, uh, but I wouldn't go anything less than five dollars. You know, you can start high, maybe do twenty a day if you want to get a lot of exposure fast, and then scale down. And if you like instant gratification, you just want to see results, I'd recommend starting higher. You know, do twenty, thirty, uh, whatever, whatever you come up with. Uh, and just a tip on pricing, you know, and deciding how much to uh, spend on each listing, you can you can actually come up with a, a formula in your business. You might say. Uh, I had done this once before. Maybe it's a tenth of a percent, or was it a hundredth of a percent? So if the property is, you know, four hundred thousand, you work it out. So you're going to spend forty on each listing, or, or whatever that is. Just kind of a little hack, uh, and you know, you can use those rule of thumb as you price stuff and, and offer to do it in your listing um, presentations. Uh, is it better to run longer Facebook ads than shorter? Uh, Fred is asking. That's a good question. It's better to run it longer to let the algorithm learn. Um, now, if you're spending a bunch of money quick, it'll learn quicker. So it's, it's kind of a matter of really how much you're spending. So um, I would run it longer on this kind of stuff, uh, you know, at least a few weeks just to get uh, everybody in the market to it, see it one time who's using Facebook just to know it's for sale. You can set the lowest cost or a target cost. Um, I would reserve the target cost. Uh, until you kind of know how the campaign's going. So maybe run it for a few days, see what your leads come in at, and then maybe set a target cost after. But generally, you're going to do fine leaving it at lowest cost. Uh, Carlos, yeah, it's being recorded, this webinar. So a uh, copy will be sent out tomorrow in the Facebook group and in uh, the chat widget in your dashboard. So we have some options here. Um, we can choose a single image, a single video, a slideshow. I had actually, I have an awesome uh, video for this property. So I'm going to go ahead and upload it now. Hopefully it won't take too long. 
Um, I meant to, got had a busy day. I meant to do this beforehand. Let's just see if I get away with it now. Okay, sorry guys, I'm not gonna make you wait. So we'll use an image. So let's go ahead now and we need to get the property. So the property is 148 for Street Ave. I'm doing a little, this a little bit out of order. Generally you would have the listing first, of course. And uh, I'm just gonna search for the MLS real quick. Bear with me. Four, four, Two eight one. This is listed by. I was pleasantly surprised. I went to an open house the other day by a KV Core user in my local market. She said, "Have at it. Promote the listing." So um, I love it. It's on the water here in Gulfport. It's a great property. One five. Um, you know, for those of you who are new in the business and you don't have your own inventory, but maybe you're a little more tech savvy and you can do this stuff. You know, just a tip. See, see if you can hook up with some listing agents um, and say, hey, I'll run Facebook ads for your listing. I mean, this is a million five nine nine, a million six. Uh, you're just getting started. Spend 20 bucks on a Facebook ad. You might generate a buyer for yourself or at least you'll generate activity around this property. So just a little tip. Um, can you comment on video versus still image? Just will upload quickly. Yeah, so you're gonna you're gonna get results either way here, Ron. Um, a still image is totally fine in my experience. If you have a really really good video, which I actually do in this case, I'll put it in the document when we're done, um, so you guys can see the video because you're probably curious. But I have a really good flyover video. Uh, but you're gonna do fine just with images as well. So um, what I need is picture of the property. This one is very good, I think. And she's actually doing an open house. I'll get the open house. So I'm using my screencasting software right here and I'll save this image to my dashboard. So I have it to my desktop, I mean. So I'll browse library and upload it. Sorry, here we go. There we go. We always run into this with Facebook, by the way, guys. Anytime I do a webinar with Facebook, post go to webinar, it's just very laggy. So thanks for your patience. Um, there we go, it grabbed the image. So single image, uploaded that to my ad. Uh, and then for the text, you can keep this very, very simple. Um, so I might do 5148 31st Street South and then editorialize a little bit. Um, or I can just copy and paste the listing remarks right here. Let's just do that. But you could just say three bedrooms, two baths, blah, blah, blah. You don't, you don't need to overthink this part because it's mostly about the picture. And this headline, which I like to use, which is C price and picks. The call to action is learn more. So I'm leaving the price out of the ad intentionally in this case, right? So C price and picks. Uh, I'll give you guys a little um, thing I've been using lately. It's this Facebook graphic symbol tool when I create my ads and Facebook posts. Um, here, I'll send it to everybody here. And I've been using this to grab some fun symbols. At first, I kind of was like snobby about it. Um, and it was like emojis are silly and ads, but actually um, they, they tend to work out all right and uh, help with performance. So I've been using this tool to quickly get emojis to use. So I'll do something like this as I create my headline. And I'll put that in the doc guys as well. Uh, and we see you want to grab you, you mind grabbing that link maybe just so we don't forget and we'll get it in the doc. Thanks. Uh, um, which, I'm sorry. Which link was that I was looking at something else? I was trying to answer a question. <laughs> That's all right. It was the <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah. It was the um, link to the graphics tool. Here, I'm gonna just paste it down on the bottom. Here. Okay. Sorry. Yep. I know people are gonna ask where what it was. 
Okay. See price and picks. And then a lot of times I'll leave the, the news feed this link description blank um, or editorialized. But but really this part right here, the see price and picks, to me is like the thing I always use on listings. It's just enough to somebody's browsing Facebook to induce the click. And a good percentage of people who click it will continue on the next uh, page where the ad pops up. They'll continue, they'll submit their info and continue through. And that's the important part. So the, the point of this ad is you don't need too much detail in order for it to work. I happen to paste the, the remarks here. You don't have to do that. You can just, I could have easily done waterfront property in Gulfport, right? And left all this out. Okay, so learn more. And now we're gonna get to the, uh, I'm using quotation marks, air quotes in the air, the fun part. Cause this is not the fun part, but this is the part that kind of makes the whole process here tick and allows you to collect that info. And that is Facebook's instant form feature, which you need to build for each listing. So I'm gonna click new form. I'll name it for the listing. 5148 31st. Just so you have it, right? And I usually untoggle, I'll leave all these settings here. I untoggle the intro. And then I'll echo, I'll say 51, 48, 31st. See how it's building on the right side of South Gulfport. C, price, and picks now. And then I'll generally, this is just kind of my flow. I, I like for the order to be a certain way. Maybe it's a little <laughs> OCD of me or whatever, but I like if you uncheck the boxes that are pre-filled, then you can kind of do it in a logical order. So I can do first name, last name, email, phone. You can even collect other stuff here and people will submit it. I'm surprised. Um, general rule of thumb with you know internet marketing in general is that you want to ask for less fields in a form because it'll kill the rate at which people opt in if you ask for a lot of things. This does not seem to be the case with Facebook lead ads. And I've used these a ton where if I just ask for an email or I ask for their whole life story, you almost always end up getting the same conversion rate. So definitely go for first name, last name, phone number. Um, if you're doing, you know, if you want to try to get the street address, a lot of times you can get it and then send something physical in the mail later, later if you want. Street address, city, state, zip code get their whole life story there because the experience is that it pops up and people go, okay, okay. And they click the button and continue without thinking much about the, um, you know, th what's being submitted. Right. And you know, that point that they're not thinking much is speaks to that point I made earlier where it's not always the best lead, right? It's not somebody who's saying they want to buy that house right now. Uh, but it's somebody going into your database who lives in your market, who's engaged with some piece of content, that you've put out there and it's a first touch and a first step toward building the relationship. Um, oh, Terry, great question. Terry's asking, will the pill app icon show up as squares? It might've done that as I created the ad, uh, probably because of the connection speed here, but they'll show up like this. Um, it's probably just the ad manager being a little slow. You can also ask custom questions if you want, but that does complicate it and can suppress um, conversions because when you ask a custom question, you make the person stop and think. So only use that selectively. I mean, if you really only wanted to generate a high quality lead, you can say, uh, just curious, are you thinking about buying a, a selling your house in the next 30 days? And they, they say yes or no, you know, you might generate a seller lead, kind of seller, you know, homeowner contact in the process, but you are going to have a more expensive cost per lead. But that option is there for you if you want it. Privacy policy, um, you do need to include this. And we all have a privacy policy link. It's just your website URL. Slash privacy.php, and you can find that link all the way down at the bottom of your site, right down at the very bottom, and you can kind of right click and copy that as well and paste it. But it always is just slash privacy.php. And then for our thank you screen, we're going to want to land the land people on the listing. Um, and we've been talking a lot about this. Uh, lately, um, 
And, you know, coming off a lead ad, one thing that you might not want to do is make somebody opt in again, right? They just came off Facebook, you've collected their information. And if you just straight redirected them, the system is going to try to make them uh, opt in again. So one of the things you can do to defray that or, um, you know, make it a better experience, there's a number of things you can do. And I'll include a link in the doc. It's too much to go into now. One thing you can do is record an actual video thanking them. Um, and then they they can you know and warn them that they might have to opt in again. Um, you can also tell them to check their email for the details. For a single property listing, it's probably not best practice. Uh, what what's probably best for a single property is to build a squeeze link with a delayed registration. So if we go single property squeeze here, I'm in conversion plus. Uh, it's under the lead generation tab in KV Core. It works very much the same way. So if a Facebook lead ad for the source, we can do property. 51, 48, uh, you cannot start a hashtag with a number. So make sure I put, I always put P if it's a property listing, 51, 48, 31st. So I know the lead came in off that. And then I can put my listing ID in here and build a quick little get lost, here we go. And then it says delay registration for one view, build direct MLS ID link. And then the link comes right here. I actually jumped into my brother's dashboard, but that's okay. We'll send him some leads. Um, so, so that will give you the link. Now I'm gonna include a video in the doc. There is a way to make the registration delayed a little bit longer. And uh, I was talking to the product team yesterday. It sounds like it's gonna hopefully end up on the roadmap where you'll be able to set the number of views here right as you build these links, all right? So hopefully that's in the near near term coming up, but I'll include a video that shows you how to manually add parameters to this link that makes the registration take longer. I just don't wanna to spend too much time on it right now. So for the thank you screen, we're gonna do headline, thanks. Click to continue. And they make you fill out both of these fields. So click to, I usually just say click to continue again, you know, uh, like that. And then view website like so, and then this is what I was trying to prepare. It's the website link that they end up at. That's the bottom line. And that's why I just went through all that trouble to create that. Uh, Cynthia, the answer is yes. I'll include a tutorial about how to do that in the doc. Uh, but, you know, delaying registration a little bit on a single property or a landing squeeze page. Um, our landing pages, everybody, the, the landing page generator where somebody opts in, it's just that simple page. Those will always automatically opt people in. They won't have to opt in again. If you're using a squeeze link where somebody's viewing a property search or a property, there's things you can do to the URL to make it take longer. And that's gonna be native, a native feature where you'll be able to um, you know, control how many views they see before they're asked to log in. So button link, see the C price and picks is a good one to use or continue. And that's about it. That's kind of what it's gonna look like, the actual lead ad. Just remember what you call the lead ad because we're gonna need that when we get to Zapier. Um, another pro tip, and I've, I've used this a few times, it's very interesting. You do have the option, it's a little more advanced, but you do have the option to not give them the property info now. And if you're setting up uh, smart campaigns in core or drip campaigns in Conversion Plus, you can send them the info by email. So another option would be to have call business and you, know, you can say, uh, great, we've emailed the property to you in the meantime, uh, if you want to talk about the best deal I know about in Gulfport, Florida right now, you know, click the button and call me. And they can actually call you straight from Facebook off the off the ad. Uh, it might upset people a little bit because you're making them jump through another hoop to get the info. But there might be cases, other cases where you're running a Facebook lead ad. And I figured I'd share that with you guys to know that it is an option to have them call you. You can send a message that tells them they're going to get the info by email and they can call, give them a reason to call you right now. You could even put a text code in here. You know, you can say, hey, text XYZ for a bonus list of hot deals in the area or a list of price reductions, something like that. So um, as I say this, you know, basically the point I'm trying to make is that everywhere in these funnels, they call them marketing funnels. If you, if you look at every little step along the way, there's little opportunities to make just a little bit, get a little bit more of a result. And that would be an example of that. Like, How can I squeeze every little bit out of this funnel? I'll sneak a text code in there. All right. So um, we'll click save. And actually, I don't want my brother to get this lead. So I'm going to alter this URL. 
because I want to be able to track it. All right, so save my form. And I have a note here. These lead forms, right here is my note. Um, it's Harry, and then you cannot edit these once you create them. It is it is infuriating. It's very sad. It, it has caused me a lot of stress in my life. I, I lay in awake at night crying my sad head to sleep that I can't do this because it's so stressful. But I'm, I'm kidding, but it is really rough. Uh, it, sometimes you'll go back and you want to change one little thing in that process I just showed you, and you can't. What you have to do is actually duplicate an old one, um, and then and then you can edit that. So uh, I'll show you what I mean by that. So I can't go here and edit this form I just created, but I can duplicate it, give it a new name, and and recreate everything. All right. I don't know. I just feel, I, I just hope that saves somebody a ton of stress just throwing that into the webinar. Right? <laughs> because it's, a, it, you know, the first time you try to edit, you, you just pull your hair out. Okay, so let's review. The ad looks pretty good to me, and we're pretty much ready to go. Right. That's the, the process of creating the ad. And now we're going to get to the fun part. Go ahead. Quick question before you confirm that. I just want to loop back. We had a couple people arrive a little late. And I just want to make sure, did you choose a traffic or lead generation when you began the com campaign objective? Lead generation. Lead generation. Thank you very much. So that brings up a good point, though. If you guys want to make life simple and you just want to get raw traffic to your listing and you don't want to fuss with all these lead ads and Zapier and inject, you know, all that stuff. You could have easily just run a click to traffic campaign and pasted your property URL in and then and then the built in lead capture at your site would have taken over. Um, the advantage, of course, with Facebook is that that form that pops up collects real cell cell numbers Like pe people don't you know, it's not a lot of people will lie or they won't give you a cell number at all. So um, but if you just want a shortcut way to get hundreds, thousands of people clicking on your listing, you could easily click click to, um, you know, click objective. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna click confirm. And depending on the age of your account, I think if you're running a lot of ads, they approve you a little quicker. Uh, it's always different. If you're just kind of starting with this, it's the first one you do, um, it might take a little while for them to approve your account, your ad. Uh, another point I'll make is, and I didn't see this, if you are running your Facebook lead ad, and it, they might make you confirm the lead ad terms of service. It's a little pop-up box, but it's really small up top. So it seems like you get to what I was just doing. It won't let you do anything else. Uh, look at the ad again. Uh, look at that first page, and you'll see like where it says confirm. They don't make it great, but just a little tidbit. If you have trouble, that's probably what it is, and they'll just make you uh, accept the terms there. All right, so we got that section done. Everybody good so far? Um, I think that's fairly straightforward, just with a little bit of tidbits and things to know. The second step is where, yuck, <laughs> gets a little hairy. Um, and uh, I'm just going to kind of, I know this comes up a lot, and everybody wants to know how to use Zapier. So you're going to get a two for one here. You're going to kind of learn how to use Zapier in general, and you're also going to know for this specific case how to tie a Facebook lead ad into, um, into your CRM. Uh, and I mentioned this in the beginning, you are going to need the Zapier Pro account at zapier.com, which I believe is $20 a month. It might be $25 in order to get this zap. Okay, so let's go here. I'm actually, I think I'll be all right to use this zap account. No, right. I need one that has the pro on it. Sorry, guys, thinking out loud. So this one will have the pro on it. So create your Zapier account, get inside. Uh, you're going to click Make a Zap. And I skipped the step. Guys, I even, like I said, this is Harry. <laughs> so the first thing, and I have it in the doc, follow the flow I put here. It'll be more efficient uh, for you. Um, what we want to do first is click the invite link and kind of tie things together. So get your zap Zapier open, right? Log into it. Then go to the dashboard uh, of, of KV Core Conversion Plus. I'm going to show you how to do this in each one. Let's start with KV Core. Okay, so KV Core. And I'm going to show you where to go to find the invite link for Zapier. Um, it's not public. I think, I think there's a little work maybe we need to do, or I don't know if we're working on it already. I'll kind of loop back with the product team. We need to, if it's not already public, it can be hard to find. Um,
yeah, it doesn't just pop up. Um, so what you'll need to do is you'll need to go into lead engine, KV Core. It's hidden, um, which is sad, but it's hidden in lead dro Dropbox. Um, maybe we can make that easier to find. And then there's a Zapier key right here. So you're gonna wanna copy that. I'm gonna open up a notepad here. There's also this awesome Sticky Notes Chrome extension right here. It's called Sticky Notes, I think. It's really cool stuff too, I've been kind of using lately. All right, then in order to get the invite link, and I'm not saying this is ideal, maybe I'll get the guys to change this. You actually have to click what's this, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna paste this in the doc for you, but you have to click that little help article up top. I don't know why they thought anybody would know how to do that, but uh, if you click it, there's a whole article about how to do what I'm showing you right now, and then the invite link is right here. So I'm gonna grab that. It's just pop it on the bottom of the dock here and I'll organize when we're done I'll put it in the right spot for you and uh, and then we're gonna take that invite link and we're more or less gonna click it so I'm just gonna paste it in and click it here and it'll say you've been invited to use KV core on Zapier I'll accept the invite and build the zap and Somebody must have authorized, let me just see. No, they didn't. And it's gonna set it up as a trigger, which is not what we wanna do, but this first time we set up Zapier, we need to kind of run up, run through this and get it linked together, right? So just do what I said, even though it's not the trigger app, just follow these steps, click connect an account. And then that API key that I just pasted, that I got from my, the lead engine page is what we're gonna paste right here. Like this. Yes, continue. Look at that. And then save and continue. And we are fine and it's connected. Now what I can do is I can change my trigger app by clicking on these by clicking right where it says KV Core right here. And then I can actually choose Facebook lead ads. Now you might have to search Facebook lead ads and that'll kind of replace your trigger app. So I chose Facebook. When a new lead comes in, uh, I've already connected my account. It's very simple. When you click connect an account, if you're already logged into Facebook, it's it's pretty seamless and easy to do. You don't need any keys or anything. It'll just know you're logged into Facebook and it'll set it up for you. So we'll click continue, page. I have a bunch of pages attached to my account. So this just takes a second for me to be quick for you. And then I just type in the name of the page, my opportunity Knox page. And then it should always be the latest Ford uh, form that you made. See how it's right up top, 5148 31st Ave, SAP. It'll always, they, they do that nicely where you don't have to go searching for it. It's the last one you created. Click continue. You're gonna click pull in samples. Now, the first time you do this, you're not gonna have any leads in there. Um, so Facebook will send you over dummy data. They, they call it dummy data. I didn't call it that. It says test lead dummy data for phone number, and it'll kind of push all the stuff in right and give you kind of an example and a framework to work with as you create the rest of the zap now it says your zap currently locks an act lacks an action step so i'm going to click action and then I, i'm going to choose kv core this time and since i've already accepted the invite it'll pop up for me yeah that's why we had to do that first you kind of have to go through the whole process and uh and grab it create contact is the only option for the action you're gonna choose that KV Core account. You know, if you're working on a team and you have multiple uh, accounts you're linking this to, you can have multiple KV Core accounts linked and you just choose the appropriate one. And you just wanna make sure you say Ryan's KV Core, right? So that you know what it is. Edit template. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick, see where the blue dot is right here. I see they added that. I remember the first time I used Zapier, it was years ago going nuts trying to figure out how where I was supposed to find the data and I didn't know you had to click this little box over to the right so they got the blue dot there now 
Uh, we're gonna choose first name. We can choose our lead type. This is gonna be a buyer. For the type, you can choose seller, both, renter. Uh, last name, pop that in there. Email, right? So I'm just choosing all the fields. I might, might've done that a little quick. You know, I click, it shows me all the fields from Facebook, then I pick email, right? Cell phone, that'll be that field. And then I can set some things here. I can do for source FB lead ad for my internal note, you know, what will show up in the system. And lead status is new. Name of the former capture method, FB lead ad, put that there. Date registered, interested in. So you have some options here. Just fill out the ones that are appropriate. You know, you can add some notes to yourself, you know, created, created from XYZ listing. And then tags like hashtags. So this would be P5148, 48, 31st. Right there. Continue. Send test to KB Core. Now, I don't know if this is going to go in or not because it's the test data. Let's see if it works. We'll kind of tell, it'll wait a second. I'll try to push the test lead in. And when you have a moment, we have two questions too. Yep. So, and I got my text instantly, which is really cool on my phone. So that did work. My test worked. You should get a, a text message that you have a new lead when the test goes. So let's answer some of these questions. Uh, yes, the video will be sent after. Um, can you explain the difference between Facebook ads and boosting a post in terms of lead generation? So when you boost a post, um, the, the post itself can be clicked on by people, but you're gonna need to put a link in the post. And then when somebody clicks that link, say they go over to the property from the link, um, they're, what you're missing versus doing it this way is that they're not gonna fill out the form automatically with the information that Facebook has on file. So the main reason to do this is that you're gonna get better contact info, name, email, phone number. Sometimes if you wanna get the address and other details, you can pick that stuff up. Um, but you can boost posts and do a similar thing to promote your listings if you want. Um, let's see, what's the next question? Uh, a little confused, basically the lead. Okay, so the question is, uh, the lead that comes in from Facebook has to be in Zapier, or can we see it in KV Corp? So yeah, I probably went a little too fast. Uh, Zapier, what they do is they connect two apps together. So let's go to an incognito window and open up zapier.com. So Zapier is a tool, and literally says it right here, connect your apps. So it'll take one app, in this case, Facebook lead ads, and it'll connect it to KV Core or Conversion Plus. So this is kind of a bridge that handles the data coming from Facebook and sends it over here in the KV course. So you never need to log in. You're never gonna log into Zapier to look at the, the info. Um, you're gonna use Zapier to shut all the information over. And again, you know, one of the reasons we kind of built this all out without needing Zapier on our core property boost so that it, it's just done. You know, it's, it's all done for you. Um, but I know a lot of you guys do this already. Uh, a lot of people wanna know how to do this. It generates a great, cost per lead, um, and it's a great way to promote your listings and get leads from them. So that's why we're here. So finish, step two has an error. Sometimes Zapier will give you these little errors here. Finish, if it gives me the error again, it's probably because the data coming over from Facebook uh, is an ideal test to zap. P boost webinar, no. And it's okay, because I'm not seeing a specific error. I'm gonna skip the test, finish, and let this go live. Um, which is usually what I do when using test data, it'll trigger an error sometimes, and then I'll come back later and make sure it's working. Uh, one thing with Zapier in general, you're gonna wanna let the ad run for a little while and keep a close eye on it. So it Things need to be tweaked here and there. You know, sometimes the leads will start coming in, you realize you missed the field or something like that. So keep a close eye on it for a few hours and you can always come back in here and edit all of this stuff. Okay, so the zap is now created. 
Uh, one thing I realized I kind of uh, glanced over for Conversion Plus users, um, the way to find your Zapier invite, invite link, everything else is the same way, but you're going to find the invite link uh, by clicking on My Settings. So you click on your name at the top right, click on My Settings, and scroll down just a little bit, and you'll see the link to to get to get to the zap to set it up and then your key to hook it all together. Are there any more questions, Emily, that I missed? Uh, well, I did see a question about retargeting, and I'm actually linking uh, some retargeting YouTube videos in for Terry uh, Theodoru. I'm hoping I said that correctly. Uh, so that's actually available to everyone in there. And then I see another question uh, from Terry Trexler. So Facebook lead goes through Zapier seamlessly and logs them into KB Core where we get their info. So he's just verifying to, to make sure he understands correctly, I think. That's right. Okay. That's and Erica, so we only use Zapier when we're running Facebook ads. Well, it can be actually applied to many, many functions. Yeah. Uh, you know, Zapier you can use to link lots of things together. For example, if you want to send all your leads to a MailChimp or third party CRM yep. or autoresponder. Um, the other, you, I, I would say, I said it in the beginning, this is a little advanced. If you're just getting started with Facebook ads, I wouldn't start here. You know, you know, run some ads with a direct click, um, you know, kind of get the hang of it. Um, and, that, and that's part of the reason we know that this process works really well. It's part of the reason uh, we built Property Boost. Uh, does KB Core offer retargeting? Soon. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Does it offer retargeting? <laughs> I've been lobbying because we need it. I mean, it, you know, it's the competition, not so much in real estate, but the big companies are all doing it and it's coming. And we want to keep you guys ahead of the curve. So um, retargeting will be coming. Uh, Annalisa probably dropped a link to an earlier webinar from last year where um, Shane and I um, went through a lot of retargeting stuff. So you can use that in the meantime. Oh, and there's a the course that I made about retargeting, but um, I'll, put, I'll put the link in the doc. So I don't remember the link off the top of my head. So where are we? Um, put link, put link to targeting course. For okay, so we've set up the ad, we set up Zapier, and then the last thing, which I'm not gonna do here, because we're getting up 46 minutes, I know you guys have other things to do, um, you can then, if you want to set up your drip campaigns and your smart campaigns based on the hashtags, the tags that you're sending in. So that would be kind of the last step in this process. You, you say, hey, that was a million six listing. Um, I, I want to run a specific campaign to those type of buyers, right? And you, you could set up a smart campaign for yourself uh, based on a listing by listing basis. Uh, Miranda's asking a great question. If you don't use Zapier, where will leads go? They'll go into in the dashboard. You can actually let's see if I have an example of one. Here's one. If you go to the ad in the dashboard, it'll show you the number of leads. All right. Well, yeah, here's the answer. This one just didn't have any yet. But you see this little blue, it says results lead form. You can actually download the leads right there. So, so I think that covered most of it. We're going to put some supplemental info in here. Uh, for you KV Core users, if you want to check out Property Boost, it's there and ready to go. I'll just show you where to go. You just go to the Marketplace tab. Uh, everything I just showed you, you can have live for a listing in 30 seconds. You know, you, you go to Marketplace tab. It's taking a second to load. Uh, Conversion Plus, it'll be available in just a few weeks, they're assuring me. Good question. Uh, Rand, Randy's asking a good question. He's saying that in Zapier, he can search for conversion and it shows up, but not KV Core. Uh, Zapier has a very complicated process for getting uh, your application to show natively. So what you're gonna wanna use Randy is the, or Randy is the invite link. Um, I kind of went through that. If you go to the lead Dropbox page and you click the help desk article, there's an invite link there. And I also put it in the doc. Oh boy, guys. Help me out. I know that <laughs> I know they're working on the marketplace page. I'll see what's going on. 
All right. So, well, it's in there. Property Boost is in there. Um, I know they were reordering where the tile showed, so they must be working on something right now, or something with my environment is messing up the Marketplace page. But um, you can one-click order Property Boost from Marketplace, uh, and I'll put instructions about that in the stock after. So uh, Property Boost, I was going to show you, is $60 for a week all the way up to, I think, two something for five weeks. You can choose the duration of your campaign. Um, and you know, my, I would argue that instead of paying $20 for Zapier and struggling through all this, it would be worth trying it out, you know, um, to shortcut this, this process. Um, right there. And, and kind of a closing thought, you don't have to just use this for single property listings. If you order our um, buyer leads ads from the menus in KV Core or conversion, um, what you're getting is a lead ad that collects name, email, cell number, the same exact way I just showed you. And it's just done based on offering people property lists, you know, just listed, price reduced, things like that. So um, you can use this in a lot of different ways. I just think that this doing it for properties kind of is a very leveraged way. You're promoting your listing. You're generating interest around specific properties. You know, you're, you're selling your listings faster and you're, you're filling your database really quickly. Uh, Dave's asking, is there a way, any workaround to not forcing a lead to opt in? Yes, I've recorded a bunch of videos about that uh, very recently. Um, and I'll put the in, I'll put the instructions on the doc. I'm actually grabbing them. I recorded another video about this this morning. So the question is, can you not make them log in again? And I think I mentioned it here, but um, there's a video that shows you how to do that. And it's going to be a native feature of the squeeze build. What's up, Dave, by the way? And our ads done by Property Boost ads that are being run from our business page so we can monitor. Terry, I'm sorry. No, that is that is not the case. So Terry brings up another point. If you order Property Boost, the ads are going to be run off a central page. It's a generic page, something like real estate for sale. Um, and we have to do it that way because it's all API-based programming tied to a page. So we can't do that for everybody's individual page. Um, so if you do order Property Boost, it's not going to be branded to you at the page level. I still argue it's worth doing to save the time. But if you are you know, if you really want total control, that's why we're doing this webinar. Here's how. <laughs> so, so yeah, good question though. Uh, Cynthia wants to know how to do the delayed registration on uh, KV Core. I can just show you really quickly. Uh, you just go to Lead Engine, uh, IDX Squeeze page, start building. So it's under lead engine, then you click IDX squeeze page, you fill out, you go to single property up top here. So you can do it for multi or single. And then here, and, and the feature I'm referring to that that should be live in the coming weeks, I don't want to make any promises, but um, where you would kind of toggle this and it would say, how many, how many views do you want to delay registration for? You know, you can put like 9,000 if you don't want them to ever register at all because they already gave you the information in Facebook, or you can delay three or four. Who did I miss? Well, Terry has a question. Do the ads done by, uh, by us, our advertising team, have the fancy icons, or is it, does it look different than what you would create yourself? <laughs> uh, Let's get Eric on the horn. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, my brother. The, the advertising team processes a lot, lot, lot of orders. Um, so, um, they don't have the fancy icons right now, but that brings up a good point. We can we can probably sneak those in there. Um, we're not going to go back to old ones and do it. It's not it's not going to affect conversions by enough that it's something to lose sleep over. It just makes the ad pop out a little bit. So yeah, I don't want to open that can of worms because my brother will shoot me. Honestly, he runs a lot of the Facebook ads and he he does not have time to go back and add them <laughs> for everybody. So. Uh, but, but possibly moving forward. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to him about that. Uh, question is, how long does it take for your team to start generating leads for us that we were buying from the company? Property boost is almost instant in the sense that it's probably next day. I think they, they get fired up by API instantly. Facebook has to approve them. And, and I think we let them go loose the next morning just so that we can track the number of days. Um, the ads that our team runs, the advertising team runs, uh, I think it's based on when you order. If you order uh, between the 15th and the first of the month, they start on the first. If you order between the first and the 15th, they start on the 15th. So it's, it's within two weeks. Oh, yeah, I saw, I saw your tickets earlier, Boris. Yeah. 
Uh, how often do you teach this amazing class? I don't know. I've done some version of this a few times over the years, but the cool part is we have all of this stuff um, in the libraries. If you go in the Facebook group and there's a specific topic you want, we can get it for you. Uh, we also have a full learning management platform that's about to be released um, where you'll be able to uh, access information like this, but not so much on a fast webinar. I realize I'm I'm really fast sometimes. It'll be kind of broken down and synthesized into little three minute videos that you can do step by step. And we're really well underway with that project. You guys should be seeing information about that soon. The first handful of courses are created, including one on retargeting. So um, yeah, so uh, I'm not gonna be repeating the same class, but I'll be back, we'll be back at least a few times a month to do something like this. Boris, yeah, unfortunately I think that's, that's the case. Um, it's just the way that our billing works. Um, okay. All right, Alice, I think we're good, right? Everybody have a good time. I hope uh, we will definitely we will get definitely get the uh, the recording live probably later this evening or tomorrow morning. And make sure you guys all get it. And uh, Jillian's asking, what is the Facebook page? Um, if you mean the ones we run property boost off of, it's called real estate for sale, I think. Um, it, it's really not important. We're, we're gonna we're gonna play, you know, not to be we're gonna we're gonna push leads off specific listings into your uh, dashboard. It's really cool and we've had really great reviews on it so far. So um, okay, everybody. Oh, Jillian, I'm sorry. She wants to know where the page pages that we run the webinars on. I'm sorry. Uh, Facebook.com slash groups slash conversion is the link. We're going to get that changed. But if you go to Facebook.com slash groups slash conversion, you'll see the inside real estate success strategies. Annalisa and I are both in there. Annalisa way more than me. She's much faster than me. She knows way more about the system than me. And you can get nice, quick, friendly help and chatter there anytime. So uh, so yeah, the Facebook group, Inside Real Estate Success Strategies, you should be able to search for that as well. Okay, thanks everybody. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, hold on, we'll, hold on. I'm gonna drop a link to the other group in there just so people. Okay. And we'll get we'll get the links to the groups in our doc here too that I shared with everybody. It, and the doc will be shared when we send out the replay, so you have this as well. All right, he got it. Okay. Thanks for the feedback, Terry. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you again soon.